All right, so this is a review of the Zoom B14, and this is me unboxing the uh, unit. Actually, I already took it out of the box already, but I had to put it back in for this video so I could show you what the unboxing is like. And that's the uh, manual there, or the little paperwork that comes with it. Comes with some batteries too, as you can see. It takes uh, four double A's, and then here is the unit right here. Take it out of the little styrofoam cover thing. And there it is, ta-da. Is there anything else that comes in the uh, box? Let's take a look here. Uh, no, it doesn't come with anything else. No, no power supply, so that's good to uh, know. That's why they give you the batteries because there's no power supply that ships with it. So if you want it on a power supply, you've got to purchase that separately. So those are the actual items that are in the box right there. Oh, and here is the original B3 that I've had for like over six years, um, just to show you a difference in size. So basically the new uh, Zoom B14 is pretty much the same thing, but just a lot smaller, as you can see, like really small. And of course it doesn't have all the ability to access all the different uh, effects all at once where you've got three at a time on the b3 that you can change where this has got less well anyway you can see that's a lot thinner it's a lot lighter a lot smaller a little cheaper made than the uh, b3 here's the battery compartment here opening that up that's where the batteries go put that back on there okay and without the batteries, it's super light. That's the left and the right uh, foot switches. It's got the little buttons there that I'm pushing, and there's the little knobs up uh, above. So that's pretty much it. Small, light. Oh, yeah, on the, uh, on the back, those uh, jacks don't seem very sturdy. That's probably the one thing I have the least uh, confidence in. As you can see, the B3, um, it's a lot more solid, big metal chassis. Like I said, I've been using it over six years, and it's uh, pretty solid. It's been uh, working very well for me. So there's the comparison of those two. All right, so this is how you uh, connect it to your computer. You can also power it from this little USB jack. No, it doesn't come with a USB cable, and you gotta make sure you use the right one. That's why I was showing you the one that it uses, um, the little small one there, and you push that in right to the back of it, and voila, you have power. You're all set and ready to go. Well, sorta. Um, Actually, I tried using it with their software and then, oh yeah, first I tried to do a firmware update. That didn't go very well. Actually, didn't go at all. It's on version one, I think, and I was trying to update it to version two. Uh, just couldn't get it to work. And then also trying to connect it here to the, uh, the Guitar Lab, whatever software that uh, Zoom uh, offers. Couldn't get it to connect. It says device found loading and it never loads. And I tried rebooting and all the different tricks and going online support and help and couldn't get it to work. I keep doing this little pop-up that keeps coming on. So uh, I'm no stranger to software. I've been using music software for over 20 years and I could not get this thing to work. So kind of a fail on the uh, Guitar Lab software by Zoom. Um, so that was one disappointing aspect of it, but you can still power it from the USB, or at least I could, um, even though, um, so you I mean you still got that feature working with the USB, just couldn't get it to actually communicate with the computer, which meant I also could not use it as a recording device for my computer. Okay, here's uh, the device. I'm just turning on one of the sounds and I'm going into edit mode. I'm showing you how you can turn on and off the different, uh, different effects, and then you can scroll through them and then edit each one right there uh, based on whichever one you click and you turn the knob of course and you get adjustments hey that's pretty amazing all right so you click that edit button again you're out you're back into the main uh, patch selection got a little button over here you press the settings and this is important to go into into the setup um, go into this little knob here to turn off auto uh, save if you don't want it to automatically save every time you make a change on the device because then you'll overwrite your presets. Um, you can keep it on if you like it that way, but I went ahead and turned it off as you can see there. It's also got a rhythm unit here. You click on that and now you can choose your 
your different patterns. You can also set your tempo, the volume of the playback. You hit the uh, left button, foot pedal button, and it starts it. Hit the right one, and it turns it off. And once you turn it off, it goes right back to being able to select which pattern you want. Turn it on again. Now you got that pattern. Now I'm going to switch to a different pattern. Yeah, it's doing a different pattern now. And oops, got to hit the right button. There we go. And I can adjust the, uh, the tempo there. Slowed it really down. That's not too helpful. All right, so let's adjust the volume. Oh, that's loud. Turn that back down. Adjust the tempo again, something a little bit more realistic, different pattern. So as you can see, there's lots of different patterns in it that you can use for you know, playing along as something more interesting than a click track. All right, it's got a looper too. Uh, and if you uh, click on that, now the left foot pedal is the record button. You push it again, now automatically it goes into play mode. It starts looping that pattern that you just recorded. Hit the right button, it, hits, it stops it, of course. So that's pretty easy, that's pretty much the looper. All right, so here's, um, you push both of the foot pedals down. Now it's a tuner, pretty cool. Uh, the only downside on this one is that it goes into bypass mode instead of mute can't go in as far as I know there's no mute button on there usually on the b3 you hold it down and then it goes in the mute but this one just goes in the bypass but as you can see it goes it tunes pretty quickly it's pretty easy to use the tuner it's just uh, I wish it would mute when I was tuning so everyone wouldn't have to hear me tune but other than that the tuner works fine all right so there is a patch and that's you know roughly what it sounds like Let's uh, go in there and I can see, ooh, one of the effects was off. So now the compressor was off. Now I'm turning the compressor back on. All right, amazing. I'm just noodling. go into the different effects settings there the different the whatever you call them the little there's five <clears throat> excuse me there's five total that you can uh, set up for each patch I guess you can call them blocks well, yeah let's call them blocks that sounds cool and each block you can you can click on oh lots of gain lots of gain oh turn that down so it does have some gain. It's got different, like for example, I'm editing the EQ settings. And I, while I was doing that, I also added a bunch of gain. As you can see, it's got uh, lots of different effects in it. I'm just clicking through randomly and clicking again because that one bored me, I guess. Uh, clicking, ooh, MM clean, that must mean music man. Yeah, I guess so. And I'm playing a jazz bass, by the way. So, yeah, for a jazz bass, that's kind of music manish. Jocko, yeah. Okay. I'm not going to try to play like Jocko, so let's just go to the next one. Yeah, whatever. Thank you. Hey, there's some chorus. Of you that like your chorus. Still kind of warming up the chorus on a bass, but there you go. And as you can see, I'm scrolling through the, uh, the presets by clicking on the foot pedal. One thing about this unit is it has a lot of overdrive models and it's got a lot of flexibility in the overdrive. I'd probably say that's one of its stronger points is being able to model. As you can see there are a lot of overdrive. That is a fat tube.
He's an angry little effects pedal, ain't he? Ooh. Well, that's peachy. Probably not good for worship. Play a little harder and it comes out a little bit more. So it's got a little touch sensitivity to it. Ah, a little synth. This pedal does synth pretty decently for considering the price. So here's another synth bass patch. As you can see, it actually tracks pretty well. Um, I didn't notice any lag or anything when I was playing it. I was pretty much keeping with my fingers. So for an under $100 device to, to track that well, that's pretty good. Excuse me. So let's edit this patch. Since it's a uh, synth patch, kind of show you what we can do there. Whoops, I'm adjusting the wrong, oops, no, the wrong, you're just, the, there it is, there you go, now you can adjust it. So that's the thing, you gotta watch what you're actually editing because it's, it's very easy to be on the wrong button underneath the wrong block. So the interface takes a little bit of getting used to it. It'd be nice if I had the uh, software actually working on it. So there it is, basically. It's, uh, in my opinion, for uh, for the cost, I got it for $79, and it's, uh, it's a winner for the cost. It's not the greatest thing on earth, but it's amazingly flexible for the cost. Uh, it can get you plenty of overdrives. It can give you plenty of uh, amps. It can give you plenty of cabinet simulators. It can also do some, some effects, some chorus, reverb, delay, your synth stuff, some basic synth stuff, and, uh, uh, you know, a few other things here and there. So it's uh, compressors, of course. It's uh, So it's a good all-around, all-in-one pedal. I think it'd be great to uh, have as a home studio device, uh, especially if you can get the USB to computer connection there working and communicating with one another, then that would be, that would be great. But uh, still, um, it's even if, even if I don't get that working, it's still a, a good purchase. And I plan on leaving this at another church that I play at. I pretty much leave the Zoom B3 at, an, at my home church that I play at. Been using it, like I said, over six years, and it's been a very, very dependable device. 
All the uh, other bass players also that play at my home church also play through it. And so it's just a good all-around unit to just leave at church and and show up and plug in. You're good to go. So I'm going to do this at this other church that I play in where I just go direct into a direct box. And then instead of just going direct into a direct box, I can now go into the Zoom and have a little bit of a... A little bit of uh, tone control before I go into the uh, to the uh, direct box. So that's another thing to mention too on the on the B1 four is it does not have any kind of uh, DI capability. It just has a quarter inch out, so you will need to uh, use it in conjunction with a DI box if you're going direct to the. PA system, um, or if you're just using it in front of your amp, then you don't have to worry about that. You just take your quarter inch out, go to the amp, and you're good to roll and just use it as an effects pedal. So you can actually do that. If you got your own amp, you can just you know turn off all the amp sims on it and just use it for the effects, for the overdrive and the compression. And hey, that would be a, a great little tool just for that. So anyway, it's a good uh, it's a good device for the cost. I don't know how long the jacks on the back are going to last. I do suspect that they uh, could uh, easily take a beating and uh, stop working, but. If I'm just leaving out of church and uh, keeping it plugged in, then it should uh, last for a good quite a long while, I hope. So, uh, so far seems to be a good investment. Again, thumbs up on it for the cost. $79 is how much I bought it for. And it, even if you spend a little bit extra more and get the other version that has the built-in pedal, the uh, volume expression pedal, then, uh, hey, you can spend 20 more bucks, 100 bucks, and you still got a good deal there. So... Uh, again, I give it a thumbs up.